Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and I'm currently surrounded by some really beautiful flowers because in this video today, I'm going to be showing you the best ways that you can preserve your flowers. I'm also going to be talking about all the different ways that you can do it and identifying which way is the best for the type of flowers that you have. So let's get started. If you've watched my channel before you know I've talked about drying flowers and preserving them um, and I do have a few videos already about them so I will like link them up and link them down below um, which are more in depth on each different style but today I'm going to be kind of talking about and showing you um, the ways that I dry and preserve flowers for the different types of flowers because not all flowers should be dried the same way and they also dry at different rates and need different things. So I'm going to kind of talk about how I identify and sort of from my experience because I'm not a florist or have like any sort of like crazy flower knowledge but this is just coming firsthand. Um, everything that I have done because I do work in preserving bridal flowers and there was a lot of trial and error before I kind of realized that not one way works for every flower. The first thing I want to talk about is the color of your flowers. Sometimes it will go lighter, sometimes it will go darker when you do dry them. So your purples and your reds dry really well. They tend to go slightly darker, but they generally hold that color. Not all flowers will hold color really well when you dry them out, even if you do do it the right way. A lot of the time, they're just not great flowers to dry. So not all flowers can be dry. Well, they can be dried, but they shouldn't be dried is more to the point. So sort of identifying, knowing that bright colors generally dry better than light colors and saying that like your uh, roses, like your light roses are really hard to dry, like your whites, a lot of the time they can go brown instead of keeping that white color. But then you've got your deep red roses, which generally dry really well. Um, so your deeper colors just generally have that better. So even though like a white rose can be hard to dry, a bright colored rose, not necessarily the same. So with these, these would be really hard to dry because um, they're white, they're pure white flowers with just the yellow center. So I would recommend, you know, any sort of white flower always dries better in silica. Um, you could press your white flowers, but they just tend to go that slight like creamy off brown color, which is okay, but I kind of prefer white flowers to stay looking white. Uh, a white flower that I have done recently is this one, which then I pre then preserved in resin. And this actually kept its color quite nice. As you can see, it's not gone brown. Um, and that's because I did it in the silica. I don't recommend pressing white flowers. Um, you can, but not all of them do turn out amazing when they are pressed and definitely do not hang dry white flowers. Saying that I have pressed white orchids before and I will be pressing some of these flowers today um, just to show you how they look and white orchids do press really well and they also do dry really well in silica. So it's just kind of identifying which way does work best for your flowers. first way that I'm going to show you how to dry your flowers is by just hanging them upside down. So you want to make sure what you do first is you want to separate your bunch of flowers. You don't want to keep them in that one bundle because the flowers on the inside are going to rot before they dry out, unlike the flowers on the outside, which are gonna be getting all that air and they're gonna be aerating. They're gonna dry fine, but you're gonna have trouble with your flowers on the center. So just make sure that you break all of them up into little bunches. Then what you need to do is just hang them up somewhere where it's dry and cool, where they can aerate out and hang them up upside down as this always does help them um, retain their shape better and keeps their color. Now for pressing your flowers. So you wanna find flowers that can be easily opened up just like this and pressed really beautiful. Some flowers like your straw flowers, cause they're so thick 
they're not actually going to press really well because they're too thick. The same with if you've got a whole rose, you do need to open up that whole rose so you can press it. You don't ever want to just put it in sideways and press it because sometimes flowers can just come out looking squished and not looking like formed beautiful whole flowers. They just tend to look like a bit of a mess. So not all flowers can be pressed. You want to look for flowers that you can cut flat at the base and then they can also have all of their petals pushed out and pressed. I do have some of these daffodils, daffodils, daffodils. I do have some of these daffodils and these can be pressed quite well. You will have to break the center of them to lay them down flat. So you're not going to get like a perfect daffodil pressing, but they do press really well because they are nice and splayed and are great for that. But any flowers like these, which are really densely compact and are quite 3D in shape, don't press amazingly well. And also because the petals are so delicate and fine that when you do put them in the press, it tends to just squish them all together and you lose all of that detail. So these flowers don't work amazing when you do press them just because they are too dense and the petals are too fine. So these need to be dried out a different way. There's two different ways that you can press your flowers. The first one is using the traditional way with a flower press. You just want to layer your petals in between layers of paper. Don't use anything like grease proof or baking paper because they have a really slick surface and they're not going to soak up the moisture. You want to use a really porous paper and then just add on your little screws or your clamps depending on what kind of press you have and just lock that in nice and tight, slowly pressing the moisture out of your petals. You're just going to want to check on these every few days and see if you've got to add fresh paper in. The second way I like to press flowers is with the microflare press. So instead of it taking days or weeks to dry out with the traditional method, this can take just minutes to dry out your flowers. You do need to be careful not to put them in for too long because sometimes you can cook your flowers or strip the color back. So that's just something that you need to be cautious with. So it's the exact same process where you pick your flowers, place them down, and then you're just gonna add the top sheets with the microplus fur, it's kind of like a felt like thing. And then you add your clamps in just to clip it into place. Then you just want to place it in your microwave. I generally do 30 second bursts and then I just double check in between and see if they need longer. Generally, if it's a really thin, delicate flower, 30 seconds is enough to a minute. You don't want to go too crazy. And that's how simple it is to use your microplus. And I feel like they turn out really beautiful. You just have to be really careful peeling them off not to accidentally damage them. The last process that I'm going to be talking about, and I've done this before a few times, is using silica gel to dry out your flowers. This is great for whole flowers that you want to keep the shape and have that 3D effect to. So this rose was dried out with silica gel, but that meant that I was able to case it and keep that 3D shape to it. When you do dry your flowers out with silica gel, you just want to make sure that you check on them every few days, as sometimes if you leave them in the silica gel for too long, they can actually start to strip the color from your flowers. So if you put in a soft pink rose and then you've left it for say two to three weeks, you're going to have issues when you come back to it and it might have lost a lot of that pink color to it and looks more a little bit brown. So sometimes your silica gel can take the color out too fast, um, but it honestly works amazing for most flowers. You can use it on you know, flowers like this that are great for pressing, but if you want to keep that 3D shape to them, your silica gel works really well. These work amazing in your silica gel. If you are using any sort of more denser flower like a peony or a rose that generally has layers and layers of petals, you can open up those petals a bit so that way you can get the silica gel in and around and that way it will dry faster. If you keep your rose really closed and um, keep the petals really in case, it's going to take longer. So with your silica gel, you need to just keep on checking on it. Also make sure you pop a lid onto your container with your flowers in, because your silica gel will suck out the moisture from the air. So if you're in a really humid climate and you don't put a lid on it, the silica gel starts to suck that moisture out from the air and stop sucking it out from the flower. 
and therefore you might end up with your flowers rotting. So you can do any sort of flower you really want in your silica gel. It tends to work for every single type, but just be careful not to leave them in for too long and to just check on them every few days just to make sure that they're not rotting um, if it is sucking out the moisture in your air. I know I have a lot of trouble in summer here because it gets to like 80, 90% humidity and I've always got to make sure I put all the lids on tight and change out the gel every few days. Any sort of container that's got a lid on it is great for this. I generally use my Chinese takeaway containers just because they're clear and it means I can see the flowers. You just want to place some of your silica gel crystals down at the bottom and then just take off the stem that you're not going to be needing unless you want to dry it with the stem. Then by all means keep it on. But generally I cut off anything that I don't want to dry because it just takes longer then I'm just going to place them down you can place them facing up or facing down kind of depends because we're going to be putting the gel all around it so it will, you'll still keep your 3d effect And then you're just going to be layering your silica gel up. I like to pour around the flowers and not directly on top of them unless you want to flatten out the flower a bit and splay out the petals. You want to just pour around and it slowly kind of fills in the gaps. Your silica gel can be reused. I just put it back in the oven to dehydrate it because obviously once it starts soaking up too much moisture, it's going to not be effective. So just to reuse it, um, put it in the oven on a really low heat to dehydrate it. Obviously without flowers in it, just the silica gel crystals by themselves and then that way you can keep reusing them again and again and then once I have filled up my container I'm just going to add my lid on so that way it's only going to be taking the moisture out of the flowers and not out of the air around it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and it's given you some more knowledge on sort of different ways that you can preserve flowers and how to identify which way that they need to be preserved. So as I said before, not all flowers can be preserved in the same way. So a few tips to take away from this is one, what is the color of the flower? Um, this will also help direct you into which way to preserve it. Um, what kind of shape and size? Is it really densely packed? Does it have lots of fine little petals? This will help you also decide on sort of which route to take when you are preserving them and also to what's going to be your final product. Are you going to be encasing these in resin or are you going to be making wall art from it? Are you going to be putting it into a really nice picture frame so you need them to be flat? These are all things that you need to think about when you are one choosing your flowers and choosing how to preserve them. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe as I post tons of videos just like this all the time. And if you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit the notification bell as that way it will notify you every single time I post a new video. And put comments down below if you found that this was helpful or interesting or if you've got any other tips. If you know um, a lot more about flowers than I do and you know another way that you can dry or preserve them or even just helpful hints, I'd much appreciate that in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching.